He has already given himself out. He will not deny his word. The Bible says that when God is faithful, that is his name. He cannot deny himself. So let's not do all this petty, I'm only righteous. The word is clear. If God says it, he will do it. He's committed to his word. He will never deny his word. The Bible says he is faithful. Faithful is his name. He will never deny himself. Now, when he's not clear in the word, it's a different thing altogether. But you can hold God to ransom. That is what faith is. And that's why we went through the whole of Hebrews 11 and we saw different examples there. Jo uh, Joshua told God to hold the son. God had never done that before. God had not done it before after then. God changed time because of one man, held the son. So we have to be careful because when you are being too holy, holy, you miss God, right? And you just die before your time. If it's in his word, he's committed to it. All right. Anything I didn't say well, Pastor Shegum? Yes, um, the, the word of God is the final arbiter. And my, with me, I, I have stayed basically on the word in everything. Although there are times that it speaks especially in a particular way or the other way, but my principle is to live by the word of God, is to hold God based on each word. That is a statement for me as a person. And that is what I teach. I say other ones are variables. I'm not sure. This one, I'm sure. <laughs> His word, Absolutely. I'm sure. The other one, I'm not sure. It may yeah. come, it may not come. I'm not sure. But I'm sure when I stay in the place of His word and I'm saying, Lord, your word said this. And that's why I am standing on this. That one, I'm sure. The other one, I'm not sure. It might happen, it may not happen. It's up to him. It's messy, it's his decision. I'm not sure, but I'm sure on the word of God. <laughs> Absolutely. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And don't forget, we're limited in knowledge. Until we see Jesus, we will not have yeah. the fullness of knowledge. So we cannot talk about the things we don't know. God will not hold us to ransom on the things we don't know. Right? That's why he says in Deuteronomy, he says, but he says the things that he has revealed to us, so we have no excuse concerning those ones. The ones he has not revealed to us, we can say, oh, I don't know. I don't know. But once he has revealed it to you, he will judge you if you don't walk by it. Am I correct? Yeah. First, is a question. Am, am I correct? If first God has revealed something to you, you are responsible for the revelation you have received. Now, if you don't know, exactly. that is up to God. Is it the sovereignty? There's a scripture for that. A There's a scripture correct? for that in James. He said we should not be many teachers yeah. because we are going to be, those are that are going to be judged with stricter standards. It's in James, it's in James chapter three, I think. Is it chapter three? Absolutely. But there are many Absolutely. He said Absolutely. we should not be many teachers. The reason why yes. he said that is because that standard we're going to judge you by what you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So it says to one to whom much is given, much is expected. Yeah. Right? That's why it's difficult to be a teacher. Everybody wants to be a teacher, they don't understand what it means. It means that God will pass, through, pass you through some things. So that when you are teaching, you are teaching with, from your heart, with power. <laughs> There's a difference between preaching something you have not lived and something you have lived. God will take you through pain so that when you are teaching, you can teach it from deep within. It's the body of a teacher. <laughs> he doesn't have to take everybody through that because he wants you to teach something and teach it with power. He will suffer you to go through the pain to understand it so that it becomes flesh for you. 